Hey, Dan. Hey, Sean. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you something. I see a lot of people talking about how to get their data into Iceberg or to migrate it from Hive. And I realize it's a broad topic, but I was wondering if maybe you can give me a quick rundown on it. Absolutely. Uh, that That is a good point. There's a lot of data out there and much of it is in Hive. So uh, it's not surprising that a lot of people are asking, well, how do I get my data or what's the best way to get my data from a Hive table to an iceberg table? And there are a number of different approaches you can take. So let's walk through a few of those. Okay. The first one is probably just the most brute force, and that is read all of your data, write all of your data. And there are actually some advantages to this. So it shouldn't be something that you just scoff at and say, well, I don't want to copy everything. But you, within a Spark job or a Trino job or many of the different uh, engines that support multi catalogs, you can actually reference your hive tables, you can reference your iceberg tables, and you can just do a straight up read and write type operation. The advantages of doing something like this are largely that you are getting a clean version of the data and Iceberg can represent the actual physical layout differently than Hive. Uh, you can do your partitioning a little bit differently. You can introduce hidden partitioning. So there may be a couple things that you can do as you do this migration that'll set you up for a better data set as a result. Okay. And then the last thing is for schema evolution, the best way to support that in Iceberg is to make sure that you have written all of the column IDs. And for legacy Hive tables, those may not exist. And so you're basically having to rely on name-based reference, at least for the legacy data. It is supported and you still can do some amount of schema evolution past that point, but there is a little bit of a warning there that if you're doing complex schema evolution and you're working with legacy data, there could be complications down the road. Okay. So read and replace, that's actually a pretty good strategy. Beyond that, and for really large data sets that you actually just want to get into an iceberg table, you want to make sure that it has exactly the same schema and consumers really aren't impacted by any subtle changes that you make. There are a couple other approaches. One of those is uh, that Spark actually provides an action that is snapshot and another one that is migrate. The snapshot basically just comes and overlays metadata, iceberg metadata on top of the actual physical files in the Hive table. So mm -hmm. what it'll do is it'll go and it'll look at all the Parquet files or ORC files, calculate statistics for them, pull those up into manifest files and construct iceberg schema metadata on top of that. Now you have with a snapshot procedure, you have kind of a clone of the table. This allows you to perform tests, validate anything that you need to in terms of like, how do I consume the data? Uh, do performance tests, whatever you need to with the data as it sits in the existing Hive table. Now, if you actually want to switch that over, you can run the migrate command. And that'll go through a process of actually making the current reference to the table, an iceberg table, but largely doing the same thing as a snapshot. The key difference being, if you do a snapshot, it's really a Hive table and you need to make changes to the Hive table going forward still. With the migrate, it becomes an iceberg table. And from that point forward, you need to use it as an iceberg table. Changes to the legacy Hive table, if you try and write to the, the renamed Hive table in place, they're not gonna be reflected in the iceberg table. Fundamentally, they're very different formats. So there really isn't an easy way to keep those two things in sync forever. So ultimately the best thing is to get it into the iceberg format and then use it going forward. Oh, okay. So Spark does a great job of this. Uh, in Trino, you can do the read write operation and it'll lay out your data correctly. But uh, Spark is going to be the easiest for some of those, like take the legacy data and just overlay metadata on top of it. Okay. The last option is you can actually just add files. And there are procedures for this too. You can directly go to Parquet files and or ORC files and just add them to an iceberg table. That takes a little bit more work. It's something that you have to be a little bit more careful with because it's not extracting the actual schema from Hive, but that is another option. And finally, the last option would be using the APIs natively. You can gather and construct and create that metadata for yourself and then add those to the tables and you'll have your data moved over into an iceberg table. Does that answer your question? It does. It sounds like it's a lot of work, but thank you. 